Good day, and welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be covering the John Deere 4000. Now, what made this tractor different from a 4020? And why John Deere decided to start building these? Well, in today's video, we're going to find out. Before we start, I'd like to thank Robert for suggesting this video idea. It's a very interesting topic to cover, and should make for a good video. The John Deere 4000 had a very short production run running from 1969 to 1972. But in those four years, they'd pump out 7,987 total units. With the common phrase of this tractor being referred to as a 4020 front end and a 3020 rear end, we'll dive into why this was and what actually made this an economical tractor for the time. Taking us back to the 1960s, the John Deere 4020 was a success, no matter how you look at it. The 4020 had brought John Deere to the lead in the market, topping other tractor brands at the time. But as the 60s wore on, other companies began making improvements to their tractors and were slowly gaining ground on Deere by offering a few more horsepower in some of their tractors at a lower cost. Now to combat this, John Deere looked at their lineup and realized there was a large gap of 25 horsepower and almost $2,000 between their own 30 and 4020s. Lead engineers began going to work on this issue. One of their first ideas was to take the 3020 and improve the output, making it a better all-around tractor. The big problem with this idea is that the power bearing parts of this tractor and the engine would need to be strengthened. And to do that, John Deere would be required to redesign, re-engineer, and retool the 3020. This would prove not to be an economical option for Deere, as this would cost a lot of money and it would take a lot more time. The second option was to take a 303 cubic inch six cylinder engine, which is built by Dubuque Works in Dubuque, Iowa, and install it on a 4020 chassis. Now these engines were capable of about 80 horsepower or more, which would fit them in perfectly between the 30 and 4020. This would have worked fairly well, except the Dubuque engines were a bit expensive, and it would also include an extra shipping cost, bringing them to Waterloo. The final idea came to make the 4020 lighter and cheaper. Minimizing some of the features on the 4020 could substantially lower the price and the farmer would benefit from having the same basic capabilities of a full spec 4020. And with this idea, the John Deere 4000 was born. Now John Deere could use many of the same toolings to make the chassis for this tractor as they were the same as the 4020. The main thing John Deere didn't change on this tractor was the engine. The six cylinder 404 cubic inch engine produced 91 horsepower at the PTO. It was very efficient and smooth running with proven reliability. Where we start to really see some differences between the 4020 and the 4000 is in the transmission. Now much like the 4020, the 4000 would come with the option of a synchro range transmission. But the main difference would be the 4000 would not have synchronizers in its reverse gears. Now this meant that operators had to come to a complete stop before shifting into reverse. Whereas with the 4020, it would have synchronizers. Now this would be a minor inconvenience for farmers. But this transmission was cheaper and easier to build. And it actually became so successful, John Deere used units like this up until the late 1980s. Another similarity between the 4000 and the 4020 would be the clutch. The clutch would remain the same. Now another change is getting this power to the ground. The 4000 used 9.5 by 15 inch front tires and 16 934s in the rear. Compared to a 4020, this would make the 4000 sit in half an inch lower. Moving on to the electrical system, John Deere would change it from a 55 amp to a 35 amp Molarota alternator. Now the instrument panel would look a little different too, but nothing too major. One cool fact is that the 4000 dash lamp, it's unique to this tractor. With a built-in ground wire, it only fits the 4000. Another big change here would be the batteries. To save a few dollars, they got rid of the cover that protected the batteries and just left the trays open on 4000s. Now as a lot of people know on 4020s, these battery boxes like to corrode from the acid that accumulates around the battery. But these boxes do protect against rocks flying up and mud and other debris. Now to save some more money in the electrical side, only one light would be installed on each fender. They would also go on to change the tack, 
giving the 4000 a double needle tachometer. Now in the rear end is where we really start to see some changes. And what really sticks out is the axle housings being a little smaller. Now this rear end is closer to a 4010 than it is a 4020. Going back in time a little bit and using some of that old technology. Another thing that looks different is the seat suspension. It's a little bit cheaper model and easier to produce. They also decided to remove the covers that cover the rock shaft. Now on the hydraulic side of this tractor, many things were the same, but this 4000 would come with only one selective control valve. This would go on to be changed by a lot of operators, adding on a second one, and was also offered by a lot of dealerships as an accessory. Now the three-point hitch is a little different story. The three-point hitch uses the same three-point as a 3020 does. Now the main ad campaign for deer on this tractor would be that you could use your old equipment, but work it faster. Now John Deere advertised that this 4000 had smaller and lighter final drives, hoping that farmers wouldn't abuse this, but you know farmers. Now with the 4000 weighing in at around 8600 pounds, this was about 1000 pounds lighter than the 4020. It was considered to be a four plow tractor, but fast enough to cover the same acreage as a John Deere 4020 with a five bottom plow. After its first year in production, there was nearly 1800 tractors out and sold on the market, being received fairly well by the farming community. But in 1970, John Deere decided to introduce a gasoline engine version. This would also bring us one of the rarest John Deeres ever built. This would be the John Deere 4000 Gas Power Shift. With only nine of these made, it's no surprise that they bring a large number. One of the most recent ones that sold in 2019 was a 1972 model that sold for $64,500. Now the main reason farmers wanted a gasoline model is so they wouldn't have to worry in the winter about starting it up or having to plug it in. Now a couple other things John Deere added in 1970 was a differential lock, as well as an electric horn and a coolant heater. With 1970 being a tricky year for farmers and the economy down, 1939 4000s were sold. And that's about 10% of how many 4020s were sold that year. With the following year approaching of 1971, John Deere decided to add the power shift as another option for the 4000. Another thing Deere did was have factory dual hydraulics, which was big for anyone running a loader or implements. And by the end of 71, the 4000 was selling roughly 25% of what the 4020 was selling. And by 72, things would get even better. Now 1972 would be the last year of the John Deere 4020, and also the last year of the 4000. And now these later model 4000s had almost every option that the 4020 would have. Buyers could now get a factory cab put on their tractor that would include a heater and air conditioning. It was also in 72 that the 4000 low profile came out. Now this is more of an orchard style tractor. The low profile version of this machine would feature the exhaust coming straight down out of the hood instead of up through the center. It would also feature a 3020 steering column. With the 3020s and 4020s dominating the late 60s and early 70s, the 4000 was also there to help. With four production years and nearly 8,000 tractors sold, this would go on to help keep John Deere on top and get ready for them to release the Generation 2 tractors, which would become the 30 series, being released in 1973. But that's a video for another day. If you guys enjoyed today's video or have a tractor you want me to talk about, let me know in the comments, and I thank you all for watching. Your likes and comments really help the channel, and I appreciate everyone who subscribes. Anyways, have a good day.